Hello and welcome to Fishing on Northwest. Wayne and Tommy Donlin. I'm proud of all the fish. What do you think, Tommy? I'm digging the pitch the best. Bags up in the sand. And after work, a cold beer. Nice one. Berries, hot dogs, land. And drinking my buddy's homemade wine. Living Northwest wild. Fishing is my kind of style. I float the wine new she when it gets hot. I'm proud of all the things that I've got. I'm it. Hello and welcome to Fish Out Northwest. Wayne England coming to you from the Fish Out Northwest studio located here in Olympia, Washington. Flying solo tonight, uh, Mr. Thomas is, or at least should be, on an elk hunt and hopefully it's going well for him. So I uh, hope to check in with him sometime later through the weekend or beginning this next week and see exactly how it is going for those guys. But um, yeah, we got out on an elk hunt here, uh, Matt Messing and I, for the muzzleloader opener. We'll get into that in a little bit here and a and, uh, little, little info on you know, how it went for a number of folks um, with this muzzleloader opener. It was kind of, kind of a surprise, but not surprising based on that doggone weather. So I wanna welcome everybody to the show. If it's the first time you're joining us here today, uh, especially here on Root Sports, go ahead, check out our webpage, www.fishhuntnw.com. There you're gonna find a couple of coupons that you definitely wanna take advantage of. Uh, FHN20 at uh, Edge Rods. We have partnered with Edge Rods and you're gonna save 20% on all Edge fishing rods all the time at checkout. Simply enter the code FHN20 and uh, if, the, if the fishing rods are not already assigned to another promo or discount code, you will in fact save 20%. Then of course, jump over to Phelps Game Calls. We still got through the end of the year here and plenty of hunting to be had. Phelps Game Calls, fish hunt in W10 at checkout and you're going to save 10% on all calls. Uh, Phelps Game Calls, check that out. So yeah, like I had mentioned, Matt Messing and I got out for the muzzleloader opener. Now we had a couple options. Our buddy uh, Josh uh, Carlton gave us a little pin drop in some uh, timber area that he had access to, a little, little uh, small timber company. So we had set up in there, our intent was to actually try to film a muzzleloader hunt out of ground blinds. Tough to do, I mean, I've hunted deer you know blacktail locally here for a number of years out of ground blinds and boy you really got to be on top of your game with uh brushing them out scent uh scent block and things and and play the game but you know going into it i didn't have a lot of high hopes for uh saturday or sunday i mean depending where you were 80 to 82 degrees on that opener on saturday not a stitch of wind i mean the woods were dead calm you could hear every little noise happening and just not a whole lot going on. Sunday morning, not a lot different. It, it uh, finally got up to about 75 degrees. That storm that was supposed to blow in and give us that weather change that I was fully expecting to get some activity in the woods there. It kind of stalled out, showed up late Monday with some wind. Tuesday kind of meandered on in by Tuesday mid-morning. It was raining pretty good and the wind was blowing and yep, sure enough, the deer started showing up and we even had a cow elk show up on one of our other cameras out of the area. So. We put in some time, just never had enough activity to get going. We even went over and checked out some, some public land. We drove in on a road, like <laughs> typical, 11 miles in, all the gates all the way in, one or two vehicles at every single gate. I mean, hey, by all means, get out and uh, give it a go. You know, lots of folks muzzle load elk hunting nowadays, which they should be. Um, the woods are busy. The woods are definitely busy. And if you've been out there uh, in doing that, you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. Unless you get up and away, you know, way out in the back country, you're gonna see folks. All right, uh, before we get too far along here, yeah, let's get to it, running down the show. Back again, uh, once again, for good reason. Joey Walton, real-time fishing, the Clearwater Bass Anglers Annual Club Championship held once again at uh, Dwarshack Reservoir. How did Joey do? Wait until you see the size of these smallmouth. Then we got a short video. Matt Messing, the Viking, <laughs> Viking Productions, filmed and edited this little gem, uh, the Young Guns or the knuckleheads, as I refer to them, hitting the river and showed us old guys how to get it done on some coho. That'll be interesting to watch. Uh, weather change is coming once again. You guys know I constantly follow the weather, river and coho opportunities. Also, I'm gonna walk you through some details about that up and coming steelhead town hall 
that you definitely need to attend. Uh, bait lab presentation tonight, we walked you through a couple different options last week for curing. Now I wanna set you up for prepping your eggs to get to the river. Um, definitely want to get them set up, prepped, and ready to go for your success. So we'll take you through that. Joining us tonight, another guest, Gary Strasberg, Conservation Coalition of Washington State. If you have not heard of them, you'll know about them when we're done. They have a petition going on that you may want to sign on to. Uh, who are they going after and why? Let's just say it rhymes with commission. And then uh, did you catch that recent Washington Fish and Wildlife Commission meeting the Wildlife Committee? Um, in all the rhetoric. I sat through the painstaking tasks of watching that. I have some notes. I'm going to recap that for you to save you the trouble and just kind of let you know where that's at. And then we'll come back after that and close out the show. So appreciate everybody joining on tonight. We're going to jump out for a quick break. Don't go anywhere. Come back. Joey Walton. And we're going to show you some amazing smallmouth bass out of Idaho right here. Fish on Northwest. The Finest Marine is the one-stop shop for the Pacific Northwest Angler. Defiance Marine guarantees the best price on a new and best service on a repower for your current boat. Defiance Marine is a Honda Premier dealership and one of the largest on the West Coast. Defiance Marine is a boat dealer who proudly sells Defiance, Allied, and Arima boats. All boats are built by West Coast fishermen for West Coast fishermen. Defiance Marine has all your boating needs to help you get out on the water. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. Video to Wayne England flying solo. First guest this evening, Joey Walton, real time fishing, www.realtimefishing.com. And uh, not a stranger to the show, you guys all remember we had Joey on just not too long ago, towards the end of summer there, as he's out there guiding for real time fishing. And he has, his uh, choice where he'd like to put in most of his time is chasing smallmouth. And uh, Joey, first of all, welcome back to the show, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, the Clearwater Bass Anglers Annual Club Championship held once again at uh, Dwarshack Reservoir. Now, look, you spend the spring and summer, for the most part, as much as you can, guiding uh, clients out there on the reservoir for smallmouth, and you get some pretty nice-sized fish even in that uh, that spring and summertime. What's a, what's a good average size smallmouth out of Dwarshack when you're out there running trips? Oh, you can see anywhere from, you know, four to six pounds. I mean, that's kind of your average size at that point in time um catch a lot i mean you'll catch a lot of threes too but mainly we're going for the little bit bigger ones and throwing bigger baits for them at that time so yeah i mean a four pound uh, smallmouth is pretty in impressive but truth be told i mean obviously in based on what you posted recently here at the end of your tournament there's there's some bigger fish to go after uh for sure is the is the fall and into winter time the best best time to actually get out there and find those big ones yeah, I think, you know, right now is um, the really the lake is getting to the point where it's cooling down, you know, and once it once the temperature starts dropping, those fish feel it and they're starting to really, really turn on right now. So, you know, from here till the end of November is going to be really hot. So, yeah, are they they're aggressively feeding as the water as it gets colder like that? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So I have to assume uh, they're not they're not obviously pre-spawn or anything, or not working towards that in the time frame. A uh, long ways off of that, as a matter of fact. So are you finding a majority of these bigger fish uh, out there in deeper water, and if so, what kind of depth what kind of depth are we looking at? You target some of these fish. Well, uh, it's not. It is depth in a sense, but it's more spot and location. I think where these fish are staging up, you know, uh, you do have shallow fish that winter shallow up there. Uh, it's kind of a weird deal, but they do. So, you know, I'm targeting them anywhere from 10 feet, which is shallow, yeah. you know, up there, um, 10 feet to all the way to 50 feet, oh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, let's, uh, let's kind of recap that tournament. Um, man, what a showing. So basically you took first place again. Congratulations on that. Um, Thank you. much like last year, didn't you get first last year on that? Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, we won. You did. <laughs> <There's two. laughs> what, uh, what was your, what was your total five fish weight this year and how did it compare to last year? Uh, 33, 38 this Oof. year. Yeah. Um, 849 big fish. So compared to last year, we had a little bit bigger bag last year, but our size consistency was a little bit bigger. Uh, we had two, you know, we didn't have fish under six pounds this year. I just had three big ones and two fives. Okay. So I wish I got rid of those two fives, but you know, I can't complain. So. Yeah. When you're, when your five is your, your small fish of your five fish, uh, turn in limit. I mean, that's, there's, there's worse things in life, <laughs> Joey, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. so for folks really not aware, I mean, when you're when you're getting into some of these bigger fish, I mean, those are world class size uh, smallmouth right there at uh, right there at uh, Dwarshack. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they're uh, they're a special fish. There, there's a lot of sevens and eights going around right now, and I think there's a lot more in there than people think. So. Yeah, that's impressive. Um, and I also was reading up on your post there, but usually uh, bass tournaments are fished by a team of two. Uh, you posted up a, uh, a winning uh, post of five fish, took first, had that 33, north of 33 pound limit. You did that all by yourself. What happened to your partner? Uh, he, he's actually a guide as well, and he had a trip that day, so he ditched me, you know. So I had to go out there and crack him solo. And, I had to you know, go I, solo. Yeah. Everything just worked out. So Yeah, fantastic. Um, hey, this is a pretty small club that you're a member of there uh, out of that area. So... Did you get a little more than just bragging rights and a trophy for another year? Any any type of winnings or purse involved with that? Yeah, we, we, we'd get a little bit of cash throughout the year, um, like AOI for the angler of the year, the big fish of the year, um, and then our side pot and then the championship obviously pays out, takes money throughout the year. So luckily, lucky enough, I walked out with all of them this year. So <laughs> nice. Was, it was a pretty good paycheck for yeah. me. Yeah. So. Way to, way to mop it up. Um, well, congratulations on your win. Uh, we're definitely going to continue to follow you as you uh, continue. You know, you got your sights set on bigger things than hanging out at the, uh, the uh, Dwarshack uh, Reservoir for the rest of your life. So can't wait to see yeah. what you got going on. Are you guiding? Uh, I know you've been busy with Toby and, and running steelhead trips and stuff. You doing any guiding at all for smallies through the fall and winter, or you just kind of let it lay? Nothing nothing this year. I'm probably just going to let it lay. I'm, uh, I'm honestly going for the record. and. It would be a hard thing for me as much work as, as I've put in if I, you know, happen to get a client on it, which is not oh, a big deal. Awesome. Yeah. But I need I, I feel I want to I want to reach my goal first. And then after that game, I'll, I'll yeah, I'll yeah. Put, yeah. Well, rightfully so. You put in a lot of hard work. You deserve it. It would be a crying shame to watch somebody else uh, land at your uh, state record, smallmouth out of Idaho. So, all right, uh, appreciate it. Joey Walton, Real Time Fishing, www.realtimefishing.com. He'll stay busy all winter long fishing with Toby and the guys and out there chasing steelhead in the clear water and whatnot. So don't be a stranger, buddy. Always a pleasure to have you on. I'll continue to follow uh, what you got going on, and we'll bring you back here real soon. All right, thanks for having me, guys. You bet. Have a good night. All right, there you go, Joey Walton. I'm telling you, that guy is uh, going places with the – uh, bass tournaments. Keep him on your radar if you follow that stuff because he's going to do great things. All right, going to jump out for a quick break. We're going to sit back and watch a uh, short video here that Matt Messing put together with the uh, the young guns, the knuckleheads out there on the river chasing coho. We'll do that after this break right here, Fish on Northwest. All right. Thank you. 
So regardless of what type of heavy gauge aluminum boats you are looking for, Allied Boats will have it for you. Contact Allied Boats today to learn more about these incredible fishing machines. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium is the largest local outfitter in the Northwest since 1975, providing thousands of people affordable outdoor gear. This summer, make your next outdoor adventure more affordable by shopping at our warehouse style pricing. We are a local Scotty dealer offering sales, service, and repair. Located in Fife and Seattle, come visit us today. The outdoors await you. All right, let's go get more. On the jingling jig. Oh, that is a hot coho. Woo! No, I'll bring it up on the bank.
There we go, boys. Right on the jingling jig. My pattern right there, Northern Lights, always does the trick. Nice, dude. Nice fish, man. Nice, bud. All right, let's walk this one, get in the bag. There we go. There we go. Camera guy gets fish too. Yep. There we go. Yeah, so <laughs> you guys, <laughs> knuckleheads that you are, yep. looks like you had a pretty good day. We yeah. did. Yeah, we, we did. did. Here I am sitting home, you know, working, and uh, we went out this morning. We're all kill us, all of us, both drip boats, electric motors, batteries died. Took the max lure guys out, one do a troll fishery. Didn't really come together for us, man. It was a morning of struggle, and... Um, I'll let uh, Richie Herod and the boys tell you all about that, but uh, you guys said, hey, your what motor you toasted, doing? right? Your motor's like done. Yep. Uh, we're gonna go float a river. We're gonna go float a river. Yep. Okay, so you guys took off and you went and float a river and my battery eventually died and um, we gave up and headed home and got those guys on the road and out of here and you knuckleheads go. <laughs> yeah, we found them. Yeah, yeah you did. <laughs> and nice Good fish day. too in this, uh, out of this region. Uh, what? Will bobber and eggs, jigs? Bobber and eggs, bobber and beads, some jigs. Yeah. There was one here, one there, but there was just enough to yeah. play e with. Each hole pretty much holding one fish. <laughs> that yeah. Fight. So get the, the fish, move on. Yep. That's low and clear still. We got yeah. more rain coming, but low and clear still. Um, pretty tough conditions overall, but... Yeah. The rumor has it the Viking even caught a fish. He did. The he Viking did. caught First a fish. Twitch fish. Yeah. Got it on a jig. Yep. Nice work, Viking. Oh, way to go, buddy. So last year he got a coho on a spinner. Yep. With nice. me and Ainsworth. So he's working his way up. Next year. Bobber and eggs are next. <laughs> Bobber and eggs are next. Yep. So nice job. You guys rallied, uh, pulled it out, and had a had a heck of an afternoon. Yeah, it was fun. Nice job. Good looking fish. So well, there you go. They're out there. Water's low and clear. Rain's coming. Change is coming. The fishing's going to be great for the next couple months. Looks like I just need to jump in this boat yep. and get out there and get it done. So right on. Well done, boys. Uh, nice to see you bring some home. That's going to do it for us here at the boat ramp. We're going to jump out for a quick break. We'll be back in the studio right after this. Support from Northwest Sportsmen make Federal Ammunition the world's leading ammunition manufacturer. Federal uses the industry's finest materials, giving you reliable ammunition that delivers superb accuracy and optimum performance. Northwest hunters rely on Sportco to provide the best selection and prices in the Northwest since 1985. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium in Fife and Seattle. Your journey begins here. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, big fish. Yeah, buddy. Nice fish. Oh, beauty. Gorgeous fish. Bobby's on the board. We got a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, geez. Come on. Nice fish. Nice fish.
We're gonna show you how to make fishy reels. You haven't been here, but you know it. You've heard the sounds, smelled the air, and seen where your heart lands, if not yet. You haven't been here, but you've longed for a destination near or far, where the young and old find rest and excitement, not apart. You haven't been here, but you're on your way to a place not far. ExploreTheDowls.com all right, welcome back here to the show, Dwayne England in studio, uh, getting through this evening, and hopefully you enjoyed that uh, little little video there, Matt put together. It looks like the boys got out, got some uh, got some decent coho on an afternoon, uh, full sun on the water, gin clear water conditions, low. This was last week, long before the rain. I think you heard uh, as we were closing out there. I had gone out that morning, taken uh, Bobby Loomis and uh, Britton and uh, and Richie Herod. We had plans of trying to get out in last minute decision, <laughs> grab the drift boat. I, I hadn't, uh, I had not set up the drift boat in preparation for a uh, troll fishery. Typically back in the day, I'd like to use my gas motor to do that. So we throw the electric motor on, I had a new battery, is charged up and uh, pretty good outgoing current that morning on the river and uh, trolling back up, man, it burned, uh, burned through that battery in short order. So about three hours or so in the morning with uh, pretty lackluster fishing, at least for us. Uh, we had a call today. The, the boys decided they're going to go float, float a lower river, and by gosh, they, um, they actually did pretty well. Uh, it's nice when you can get out there on the water, a little bit tougher conditions, and you're finding coho either with jigs, beads, indoor, of course. Bobber and egg tends to get it done out here in this region, Grace Harbor region on some of these tributaries. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, now, hey, uh, don't know if you noticed the last couple days, but a good amount of rain coming down. And so, yep, the river's definitely on the up, and uh, fishing has been good. It's going to continue to be good. I'm excited because I think through this weekend here, it's going to be absolutely uh, on fire in a number of locations. A lot of the rivers are just looking prime time. If you keep fishing logs in, you should. You go back and look at those numbers of where, where they should be, and uh, you'll see that your rivers are dropping into prime time as we roll through the weekend here, even tomorrow. With this lack of rain today and these cooler temps, Water is definitely dropping tomorrow, Friday the 13th. If you don't have to work, I would recommend you get out on the river. Getting into the weekend, 14, 15, yep, deer season opens, modern rifle. I'll probably be in the woods trying to go find a deer, but I am definitely fishing tomorrow, taking advantage of that before I go full on into this next week and um, get out in the woods and do some hunting. So more rain is on the way as we uh, work through the weekend and get into that Monday, Tuesday. If you looked ahead at the weather, we definitely have more rain coming. It's gonna bounce those rivers back up. They're gonna take a pretty good shot upwards and um, it, the, it'll be good. Uh, remember, we wanna fish those rivers on the drop. Uh, it may be a little tough as they're going up at first, especially if they're gonna be going up fast. So we look for that prime time 13, 14, 15 before this next wave is coming. And you're gonna see that that water is dropping out for three, four days there. You got some prime time to get on the water and get some fishing done. And, um, but prior to that next rise, you know, that fishing will be good. If it's a slow rise, the fishing's gonna, gonna continue to fish even as that water's coming up. So uh, also remember out here in this Grays Harbor region, you have a two fish limit all the way through November. Okay, so hatchery or wild coho, two fish limit all the way through November. And we have agreed two fisheries as we roll into December. We have a one fish limit, one coho limit, uh, or a one salmon limit as the chum will be in as well. And uh, that's important in December to, to remember where we've been because the last couple of years we had agreed two fisheries in the month of December uh, for one fish and we ended up losing that out based on steelhead. So why do I bring this to your attention? Well, we need to fight for our right to be back in the water through December, not just chasing uh, salmon that we've already had agreed to fisheries for, but also for steelhead. So I wanna remind you of these, uh, these scheduled town hall meetings, these Zoom meetings that will be coming up here. It's important to attend these meetings and let your voice be heard, or at least listen in on the meetings to understand what's going on. 
Uh, the first meeting here is going to be October 25th at 6 p.m. It's really easy to land where you need to be to get logged in onto the Zoom process. I'm going to walk you through it real quick right now. Simply Google WDFW Coastal Steelhead Town Hall 2023. Click on that first one that populates Coastal Steelhead Management. It's really easy. Click on that. It's going to take you to your next page. Scroll down. You will see October 25, 2023 Virtual Town Hall number one. And when you see that, you go ahead and click on that, and you'll see that uh, attend this meeting via Zoom, okay? So you want to click on that one. As you scroll down, you find that. Click on that. It's going to open up your registration page. Add your email and your name in there. Hit register. You'll get a reply email, and uh, you'll be registered just that easy to attend that meeting. It sends you a notification back to your email. It reminds you when the meeting's going to be so you don't miss it. And even if you don't want to say anything, just to simply listen in. Now, I would hope that folks would chime in. We need to advocate for our opportunity to chase hatchery steelhead on these upper tributaries that do not impact those upper wild Chehalis watershed destined fish. Um, we can go after them hatchery fish December, January into early February in some cases. And by all means, we should be fishing from our boats. If we have the numbers to go after, and we have the opportunity, and we have the creel sampling at the uh, boat ramps, WDFW has the funding to provide the creel sampling. They have all the things in place. We should be able to fish out of our boats, and I'm going to fight hard, and I hope all of you will join us in that fight as well. We can go after coho. We can go after steelhead in December. Let's make that happen. All right, going to jump out for a quick break. We come back. Going to be in the bait lab showing you how to prep those eggs we cured last week to get them on the river and find success. Right here after the break, Fish Hunt Northwest. Allied, the new leader in heavy gauge aluminum boats. Allied boats have standard reverse chine and lifting rakes to help you plane faster and run at lower RPMs. Allied boats have several models to choose from, ranging from a 19-foot Mustang all the way up to a 32-foot Liberator. So regardless of what type of heavy gauge aluminum boats you are looking for, Allied boats will have it for you. Contact Allied boats today to learn more about these incredible fishing machines. Hey guys, I'm Big Mike. Come on down to the Edge Pro Shop and see me. We've got all the best brands under one roof. We've got Hawken, Procure, Short Bus, Pro Troll, Yakima Bait, Get em Dry Jigs, Northwest Bait Scent, Daiwa Reels, North Fork Lures, North Wild, Brad's, Superfly, Rocky Mountain Tackle, and of course, the greatest rods ever built, Edge rods. All right, welcome back here, Fish and Northwest. We are in the Bait Lab. Bait Lab presented by Sportco and Outdoor Emporium. Tonight, we're going to walk you through uh, basically setting your eggs. The ones we cured actually last week. These are the um, these are the Braxo Fire. These are the Fire Cure. And with the Fire Cure, if they turn out a little better than you would like them to, uh, it's pretty simple to get them firmed up a little bit um, prior to taking them to the river. So one thing I like to do is I take them out of the bag and put them in a colander so that uh, we can drain off the excess, drain off the excess uh, fluid or uh, liquid on them. And then a, a couple options here. So we take, I like to take my, I like, hey Jordan, I think I lost the, 
Okay, I can't, okay, sorry, couldn't hear it. All right, I like to take my skeins and leave them in the, uh, the full skein, all right? So that's a personal choice for me. Um, others like to cut them into bait size pieces, and in doing so, you got a couple options, okay? So if we're gonna cut them into bait size pieces, I don't wanna just throw them into my bait box and get them all gooped up and have them um, some extra juice and, and uh, you know, getting all gooped up in there and just being a mess. And or I don't wanna put them back in my Ziploc bag. And again, they're just gonna create a lot of juice and make a big mess. So some things we, we can do, you know, paper towels were great in firming these up and drying them out. And I'll take them out the day before and I'll simply cut them into pieces. Now, I don't fish them in pieces a whole lot. Um, I, will, I will put them into bait size pieces when I have other folks fishing out on my boat and or um, take, take persons bank fishing and whatnot. I like to get them all ready in the container so that they're ready to go and they don't have to worry about cutting bait size, okay? So if you're gonna do this, if you're gonna put them into bait size pieces, I suggest putting them out on paper towels the day before or so, and then, you know, just, just cut them into appropriate sizes that you are going to uh, fish on any given piece of water that, I mean, you guys know where you're fishing and what size bait works uh, for where you're fishing. So we're just taking these fire cure eggs they're a little juicy. I want to firm them up a little more. I'm going to put them into bait size chunks. And again, I had them in my colander for a few hours to drain off that excess fluid. Now I'm putting them out here. And again, I got a couple options. I can use some Boraxyl Fire. You can use Borax if you choose. I like to use the Boraxyl Fire just to add a little extra color to them, a little more pop, especially in different colors of water. The other thing you can do is, and we've talked about sending your baits before, once you cut them into pieces like this, I can take, um, say, tuna oil, if I know it's gonna work well with tuna oil. And if I put a drop or two of tuna oil on some of these baits, now I'm really changing the scent properties that this bait will put out. Now, because I wanna firm these up a little bit more, even after they've been cut like this, I sprinkle just a little bit of this Baraxel fire on the top here, okay? And that is, not only giving it a little bit of a subtle color change as far as fluorescence and UVs, but it, uh, it definitely firms up the backside of these eggs and uh, makes them more uh, tacky and they, they hold together well, especially if you've got persons that are fishing with you that tend to cast a little bit hard. So, and, and I'll show you the full skein method here in a minute, but I like to do this the day before the afternoon before, let them sit overnight, get up early in the morning, and now I'm gonna put these in tubs. Again, I don't throw them back into my bait box. I don't throw them into a Ziploc bag so they get all mangled up and juiced up. I'm taking each one of these, and we're literally placing them in my container here. I'll set that center so you can see it. We're gonna set those in here. Uh, I can leave these out on the paper towels on the table overnight, so this would be next morning, nice and, Nice and firm, nice and gummy. They got the extra scent on it that I that I added because I know a particular fishery that I'm going to, that's where, you know, that's gonna work well. So I set them in there, keep separation. Now I'm gonna grab a couple paper towels, okay? We're going to line it simply like this and we're gonna stack in a bunch more baits. Again, I will do this when I am fishing other folks in my boat. Um, and or we walk in somewhere and we're bank fishing and uh, I just don't want folks having to deal with, you know, cutting bait. Uh, they can just simply fish. If they have a bait box, they can throw a couple of them in there, stand out in the river and fish and not have to come back to the bait box uh, constantly all the time, okay? So me, I prefer full skein. And, and for a couple reasons, I like to cut them as I go. You guys know I've talked about it, I keep the scissors. In the bait box, when I'm on the river, you know, hey, I'm just putting a skein or two in the bait box, cutting them as I go and, and fishing them. How do I store those? Well, pretty simple, uh, same method as, as the cut bait. I line with paper towels. I'm simply putting a couple skeins in here, okay? And then I put paper towels over the top. Um, these have you know, I put these in the colander, they're, they're drained off most of the fluid. Um, there's plenty of, of juice, egg juice, and fluid left in these eggs that they will milk out really well. 
uh, as you cut them and fish them. Okay, that's not a problem. This is just keeping them from getting so sloppy in a bag or in, in, a, in a bait box or something like that. So this is for transport. This is for uh, to ensure they're not getting smashed on the way in on the trail. Uh, I put them in the containers. I, you know, I pre-drain them. I pre somewhat dry them. I keep them on the paper towels so it absorbs all that extra uh, fluid that's coming out. And when you cut them to fish, again, putting out plenty of uh, scent, plenty of downriver scent, plenty of color, and uh, they fish well. They're going to fish more durable if you pre-dry them and pre-stage them it, versus just taking them out of the bag after you've thawed them out. They have a little extra juice in that bag. If you're just cutting them out of that, you're going to be disappointed on a lot of your cures because they're just too soft. So take some time, prep them the night before, firm them up, put them in containers, whether you pre-cut them into bait size or whole skein, and you're going to be much happier with the results. All right, you can jump out for a quick break. We come back. I believe we have Gary Strasberg be on the phone for a quick interview uh, in the studio right after this break. Right here, Fish on Northwest. All Defiance boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why all boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. All Defiance boats come standard with large fish boxes that are fully insulated so that you can ice your fish properly all day. All Defiance boats are foam flotation filled and unsinkable for the ultimate in safety while fishing offshore. Before you buy any boat, stop by or call Defiance Boats today to ensure you are getting the very best glass boat your money can buy. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. New days, new beginnings, new friends, new loves, new dreams, new goals, new scenery, new job. No matter what the next chapter holds, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate will be there to help you find the new that's right for your lifestyle at any stage of your life. Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Expect better. We're going to show you how to make fishing reels. All right, welcome back here in studio. Little uh, little punt, if we will, a <laughs> little equipment issue here uh, as of late. But I uh, want to introduce our, our buddy, Gary Strasberg. Uh, I got you, Gary? Yeah, you got me. I'm right here, bud. Yep, got you. Okay, so we're going to do it old school, man. We're going to use the phone and get through this, uh, <laughs> get through this segment. No problem, just like the old radio days. So Just like the old radio days. You got it, man. So, uh, <clears throat> hey, you, uh, you represent a fairly new group, Conservation Coalition of Washington State. You guys are on Facebook, social media platforms and whatnot. Maybe tell uh, people exactly who you are and, uh, you know, what, what your goal is. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, so we basically got started uh, as just, uh, man, there was probably three, four, five of us were just kind of texting, emailing, and uh, calling each other back and forth because uh, we were sick of the uh, the commission, you know, and everything that's been being done to us ever since Spring Bear. And then pretty soon we just kind of all got together on a uh, one of the platforms. I think it was uh, Instagram, uh, the um, groups, basically. And we got started going back and forth. Well, then we started recruiting more members. And we moved over to a different platform, and one of the members actually happened to just name the the uh, the group for their purpose, and it said Conservation Coalition one day, and we kind of ran with it. Uh, so that's how we got started on that, and then now we're probably about uh, oh I don't know thirty members strong as far as members go. Okay. Um, but basically, we're just kind of a watchdog group. We try to keep the Fish and Wildlife Commission in check. We are. I mean, busy, busy bees. Uh, that's all we do. I mean, literally, our group is active every day, all day long, doing nothing but when our in our spare time, keeping the Fish and Wildlife Commission in check. 
So that is truly the mission of uh, Conservation Coalition of Washington State is checks and balances. You mentioned it as a watchdog group, just laser focused on the Fish and Wildlife Commission and what they have going on. Absolutely. And, uh, and one of our main things we try to do is we try to get as much information out as we can, whether it's social media, phone calls, uh, talking to people in, you know, in the flesh, wherever we can, we want to get information out because you wouldn't believe the amount of people that look at you like you've got three heads when you tell them what's going on. They don't, people don't know. Yeah, it's, uh, and I mean, unless you're tuning into the meetings, and uh, geez, God help you if you are, and I'm going to <laughs> delve into that uh, later on the show here, but, uh, um, you know, it, it takes forever for them to make a decision on anything and move forward with progression, and typically what happens for a lot of folks is they, they hear about it after the fact, and then they, they want to know, well, how did this happen? Or, you know, why, why is it like this right. now? And it's, it's right. really hard to sit through those meetings. I'm glad there's an organization like yours that has made it a point to say, hey, we're going to be the watchful eyes of this thing and get the information out to people. And in saying that, it sounds like you guys got a petition going. Um, we, how do folks sign on to that petition? And what's the intent of that petition exactly? So the intent of the, the petition is to basically uh, we it's to raise awareness to the commission to show them that we aren't screwing around, that people are paying attention, and we want to take as many signatures as we can to Olympia uh, on this next commission meeting on the 27th. I'm going to present this to the commission. Uh, it's not a legally binding uh, document, you know, but it's a way for us to say, look, people are paying attention. And what it's for is we petition for the Washington State Fish and Wildlife Commission to immediately withdraw the proposed conservation policy, basically their preservation policy that right. they're trying to push on everybody. Right. So, yeah, and, well, and, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, and so, yeah, uh, so we've got these dropped off throughout the state. Um, you can get a hold of the commi uh, the coalition via Facebook or Instagram uh, uh, directly, and we can try to direct you into uh, where the, the, there are multiple sporting goods stores and everywhere else throughout the state. And if you are interested in getting one, uh, you can get a hold of me personally, and I can get you one uh, that you can get signed up. Okay. Well, it sounds like uh, sounds like you guys got some you know initiative moving forward. You have a petition out there that people need to sign on to, and then you're going to present this at the up and coming uh, commission meeting here in Olympia, October 27, 28. They have a they have the wildlife committee on the 26. You and I'll be paying attention right. to that, but they have the actual commission Absolutely. meeting. 27, 28, you and you folks are going to be there with the petition just to say, hey, here's 3,000 plus signatures of persons in this state that don't want anything to do with the direction you're taking the conservation, air quotes, preservation uh, right. guideline. It, exactly. And it's taken off. It's actually kind of taken off. I, I think right now we've got more signatures than we thought we were going to get. You can also sign the petition on Howell. Howell.org. Okay. Uh, I was working with uh, Charles on that, and Charles has the petition up on Howell. So you can sign on there as well and sign the petition on Howell. And I don't know how many we have on there right now, close to 2,500. And But most of those are Washington State residents. Perfect. All right. Well, uh, the group is Conservation Coalition of Washington State. His name is Gary Strasberg. Appreciate you joining me tonight here, buddy. Glad we were able to pull it off old school via the telephone. Still works <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Yeah, it sure does. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, we'll have folks look you up on Facebook and Instagram and get on to your social media platforms. And thanks again, man. Have a good night. All right. You too, buddy. Thanks. Absolutely. All right. Uh, Conservation Coalition of Washington State. Look them up via your social media platforms and get, uh, get signed up on that uh, petition. It's going to at least put some you know, folks in names in front of that commission to let them know, hey, we're not happy with the direction they are taking the state of Washington as it relates to managing our fishing game. Okay, we're going to jump out for a quick break. We come back more on the uh, Washington State Fishing Game uh, Commission and some of the things that went on this week. Don't go anywhere. I'll get to that right after this break right here, Fish on Northwest. A Northwest favorite for almost 40 years, Arima boats are manufactured with pride in Bremerton, Washington. All Arima boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why Arima boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. Arima can offer every boat with Honda outboard packages so that you can take advantage of the reliability and five-year top-to-prop warranty from your Honda outboard. Call or stop by Arima boats today and let them help you get into your very next boat. Yep, for sure. Oh yeah, big fish. 
Yeah, buddy. Nice fish. Oh, beauty. Gorgeous fish. Bobby's on the board. We got a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, jeez, oh, come on. Nice fish. Nice fish. Support from Northwest Sportsmen make Federal Ammunition the world's leading ammunition manufacturer. Federal uses the industry's finest materials, giving you reliable ammunition that delivers superb accuracy and optimum performance. Northwest hunters rely on Sportco to provide the best selection and prices in the Northwest since 1985. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium in Fife and Seattle. Your journey begins here. All right, did you, uh, welcome back. Did you tune in to the Fish and Wildlife Commission uh, Wildlife Committee meeting <laughs> held Monday? If you didn't, no worries. I'm going to kind of recap a few things, a few of my takeaways from that meeting and why we find ourselves on this hamster wheel. It doesn't seem like we can ever get anything done. So watching it, uh, the four that sit on the actual Wildlife Committee, uh, which is an adjunct of the Fish and Wildlife Commission nine-person panel, but you have four on the Wildlife Committee. And they are working on things uh, such as, uh, you know, bringing, uh, gosh, bringing the, the game management plan forward and a number of things that they had listed for this meeting. Couldn't seem to uh, stay on task to get that done. So Lorna Smith, former zookeeper, as I refer to her, is the chair of the Wildlife Committee. Um, she's an interesting individual. She portrays herself proudly as a preservationist, uh, not a conservationist. And um, here's here's a look at at the chair of uh, of your wildlife wildlife committee. Well, as you know, I am one of the non hunters on the committee, and for that reason, I asked Commissioner Anderson to take a very close look at the ungulate proposals, deer and elk. And um, one of the things we were considering, and you asked us to consider, was the uh, possibility of feasibility, recommend, recommendability <laughs> of um, delegating some of the authority for those seasons to the director. So, Jim, did you want to say anything about that? Now, the intent of this meeting was to, again, uh, begin moving forward with the three-year season-setting process, which is normal for DFW uh, when it comes to uh, game management, and also to update the, uh, the game management plan. Okay, these were some of the tasks at hand. They had uh, a couple different levels of, of uh, lists and items they were trying to work their way through. Um, credit to WDFW staff. As I watched that thing, uh, they came well prepared. They had the information that uh, you know the commission would require. They were ready to go with providing the information to help the commission make decisions and get moving forward on some of this stuff and either separate out or delegate some of the ungulate uh, responsibilities, oversight, season setting, and regulations, which is what DFW has done. Uh, they're ready to move forward with that and say, hey, let's give this, let's push this off to the director and staff. They can fully on handle this stuff. Not a big deal. Um, but uh, they continue to kind of meander around and, you know, the, the department came forward with the information. They basically just said, here's kind of, here's kind of where we're at. Take a look at this. As I mentioned, you know, uh, you know, we, we have a recommended approach on what what moves forward, and it sounds like maybe there are some ideas that from different commissioners about things that are uh, perhaps different than what we recommended. And so I'm I'm open to those ideas. Basically, the ideas that we put forward are fairly straightforward changes to the deer, elk, uh, some fur bearer things, and and obviously the migratory waterfowl seasons. And those are the the things that uh, we we recommend moving forward with. 
given that we're still working on some of the carnivore issues, uh, you know, frameworks for carnivore hunting like bear and cougar. Just kind of reminding you that, you know, staff was ready to go. They, um, they have an agenda they're trying to stick to and they have uh, ideas on how this has worked in the past and they want to kind of stay down that, that task and the commission has already made it known. They have some ideas they want to bring forward as well. Um, I found it interesting as we work through the process. Um, let's see here. We had, uh, we had uh, some distractions, so to speak. Uh, here's a look at uh, Melanie Rowland. She basically derailed the agenda that was at hand by just all of a sudden throwing in some other things she wanted to discuss. Um, I am, we got a, a fairly significant letter, um, at least to me, from a constituent talking about not allowing deer baiting because of chronic wasting disease. And I would like that raised. I, I don't know if it's part of this or if that's a totally separate whack or what. So again, they're trying to work through a, uh, an agenda where they're, you know, supposed to be coming out with the three year season setting process and update the game management plan. And they're supposed to be kind of going through this checklist, decide what they're going to delegate to the director and staff. And then all of a sudden, Melanie figures she just wants to start talking about CWD and baiting. When she says constituents, she means persons that are in the anti-hunting uh, groups that don't want person's baiting and they're going to find a way. Oh, there's CWD potentially. We're going to find a way to make sure that hunters can't be baiting in areas that is denoted as completely legal. So um, there are anti-hunters on this group. There are anti-hunters on the, uh, on the uh, wildlife committee, subcommittee of the Fish and Wildlife Commission. I have so much more to get into based on that meeting, but we barely scratched the surface here tonight. So uh, just kind of making you aware of some of the things that go back and forth. The meetings are difficult to follow. They jump all over the place. And at the end of it, they hardly ever get anything done. It's pretty disappointing. All right. Uh, just again, barely scratch the surface. We're going to jump out for a quick break. We'll be back here in studio right after this. Defiance Marine is the one-stop shop for the Pacific Northwest Angler. Defiance Marine guarantees the best price on a new and best service on a repower for your current boat. Defiance Marine is a Honda premier dealership and one of the largest on the West Coast. Defiance Marine is a boat dealer who proudly sells Defiance, Allied, and Arima boats. All boats are built by West Coast fishermen for West Coast fishermen. Defiance Marine has all your boating needs to help you get out on the water. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company could build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. For more than 90 years, you've entrusted one brand to guide you towards living the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Now you can entrust affiliated Better Homes and Gardens real estate professionals to interpret your needs and help you find the home in which to live your dream through every stage of your home buying or selling process. And through every stage of your life, there's Better Homes and Gardens real estate. Expect better. All right, welcome back to the show as we close it out here. So much more to get to. Unfortunately, you're running out of time and not going to be able to touch it. Uh, we do have four days approval of clam digs starting October 14th, so be looking for that. Going to do it for us this week here out of studio, Fish on Northwest. Be back next Thursday, same time, 6 p.m. to start. And catch us on Sunday, 9 a.m., Root Sports, 9 to 10 a.m. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week right here, Fish on Northwest. <music>